What's up everyone, Aaron Nagler here with Cheesehead TV coming to you live from my living room to talk about the Packers hiring Matt LaFleur, most recently the offensive coordinator for the Tennessee Titans, only one year there, before that one year with the LA Rams, with uh, Sean McVay, and before that with Atlanta, the Falcons, and Kyle Shanahan, obviously considered one of the bright young offensive minds in the league now set to become the next head coach of the Green Bay Packers. And before we begin, I'll just say this so it's out there and everyone knows where the hell I'm coming from. As I said on Twitter a little bit ago, you're going to hear a lot from a lot of people who are paid to give their opinions. But the truth of the matter is, nobody knows. Absolutely, positively, nobody knows how this hire will turn out. If it is a good hire, a bad hire, whatever, we will find out in the ensuing months and years. But as of right now, sitting here, early January 2019, nobody has a clue. You can safely ignore everybody who has an adamant opinion about this hire, including myself, uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, the early word is that he would like, meaning Lafleur, would like to keep Mike Pettin on as the defensive coordinator. Obviously, a lot of Packer fans will be happy to hear that, uh, at least the ones that I have been privy to in my mentions and in my inbox. Uh, the overwhelming majority have said they would want to keep Pettin around. This hire seems to facilitate that. Um, interesting note in Rob Domofsky's story that essentially broke the news, uh, saying that uh, there is a chance that he may want to keep Joe Philbin on, which is interesting since Philbin shares an agent with Lafleur uh, and Mike McCarthy, actually. But uh, that's where we're at. Let's see what's going on here. Sorry, guys. Doing three things at once. Usually I'm in the studio. Of course, this news broke immediately after I boarded a train home, as is uh, the predilection of the Green Bay Packers news always breaking when I'm in the subway. That's how they like to operate, and here we are. So, hello to everybody chiming in. I'm super worried it's not going to be good. Thoughts? Joan, calm down. As I just said, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Although, I will say it's interesting as my buddy Will Brinson over there at CBS Sports pointed out, the Packers sure do seem to have a type. Uh, the young offensive coordinator mold uh, without previous head coaching experience. That's uh, been the case with Mike Holmgren, Mike Sherman, Mike McCarthy. Obviously, Ray Rhodes is the outlier there. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, the route they have gone yet again. And as far as what kind of hire it will be, Worrying, A, will do you no good, because what does it do other than get you worried? Uh, and B, we have to see how the rest of this offseason plays out, how the roster is constructed, and then uh, who uh, is hired on staff, who is retained, who is brought on board, etc. So much yet to play out. Uh, worrying isn't going to do, do you any good. So calm yourself. It's 5 o'clock somewhere, maybe where you are. Have a drink. Next year will be no good. You have no idea. You have no idea. Zero. None. Let it play out. Brian Gutekunst, now the spotlight turns to him and the construction of the roster. We'll see what happens. We'll see what moves he makes to try and turn this thing around. No one knew what McCarthy would do when he was hired. Apt uh, observation. Absolutely. Don't forget, Mike McCarthy was coming off of a year in San Francisco where he had one of the worst offenses in the league. Jumped to his time in Green Bay, and they named a street after him after winning a championship. So, don't. This is what I'm talking about when I say you're going to hear people talking about the Titans' offense and this and that and uh, lack of experience, yada yada. Nobody knows. Nobody has a clue. When do you think he will have his staff finalized, Connor? That's a good question. I would say over the course of the next week to ten days. One of the nice things about the Packers jumping in headfirst uh, before everybody else, although it does sound like the Buccaneers are close to. Uh, making Bruce Arians their head coach. What's nice about being first is that he should have his pick of the litter, so to speak, uh, or at least be able to make his case to coaches around the league to come and join him, if that's indeed what he wants to do. Now, like I said, he could be keeping people on board who are currently on staff. That's one of the reasons the assistants were kept around, so that he could have the choice. But I will say this. There are few certainties in this world. There are few certainties when it comes to hiring a head coach, etc. We don't know how it's going to turn out. I've explained all that. But I will say this. If Ron Zook is still employed this time next week, it was a bad hire. That's all I'm going to say. 
I, that, that's the one tried true thing I know that I can say with definitive ease right now, we're sitting here as the news breaks that he has been hired. If Matt LaFleur keeps Ron Zook on as special teams coordinator, you know it's a fail. That's the only certainty in this situation. That's all I can give you. Uh, let's see what we have. People need to stop with the Titans offense and what they did or didn't do. It's about talent. I very much agree, which is why I say all eyes now turn to Brian Gutekunst. <laughs> Where was LaFleur ranked on your personal board of head coach candidates? I didn't have one. This is it. Here it is. Live shot of my personal list. I'm so glad we struck the first coaching hire. I mean, it's nice to get out in front of it. No doubt about it. Uh, hopefully his first fire. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Zook's a fun guy. I've talked to him many times. He, I, I wish nothing but the best for him, but yo. Yo. How do you feel about Petten staying on board? Corey, I'm, I'm all for it. I love him as a coach. I thought he should have gotten consideration as head coach, although he has said he didn't doesn't want to be a head coach again. Um, I really like him. I really like him in Green Bay. I like the fit. And I like the, uh, the fact that they'll have some continuity on that side of the ball um, rather than going to their third defensive coordinator in as many years. Uh, those young guys get to keep growing in that system. They get to have uh, a bit of continuity uh, for the guys who have been there for a while. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. I, I like that in a lot as a coach. What does Corey think about the hire? I have no idea. I have not talked to Corey other than a text exchange where I said I was pissed that the news broke while I was on the train. When will they announce the hire? Good question. Um, because there is the whole Josh McDaniels fiasco hanging in the air uh, until uh, it's official and you see him in the green and gold up there on the podium with Mark Murphy and Brian Gutekunst, but I tend to think it'll be soon. If you are Aaron Rodgers, how are you feeling? Excited! You got a guy with bona fides who worked with uh, Matt Ryan when he won the MVP. A uh, guy with Kyle Shanahan, obviously. You got a guy who worked with Sean McVay. Did great work with Jared Goff. I tend to think we would have seen much more growth out of uh, Mariota this year if he hadn't been hurt for a good deal of time. But yeah, if I'm Aaron Rodgers, this is exactly what you wanted. Guy who's going to bring in a lot of new ideas, um, a modern offense, so to speak. Still rooted in a lot of the principles that you already know. Yeah, if I'm Rodgers, I, I'm licking my chops. Definitely. How much does who the coach is have to do with who they draft? Not quite sure I understand that question. Will McDaniels thing haunt him? Haunt who? Murphy? I doubt that. Oh, you mean McDaniels backing out last year? Is that what you're referencing? Um, I don't think... You know, he's his own man. Now, if he does it, <laughs> if he ends up doing the pulling of McDaniels, then it'll be uh, he'll be linked forever. But I doubt that's pros and cons on the floor. Um, good question. I mean, again, nobody knows anything. Sitting from the outside, looking at the resume, looking at his body of work, and hearing from a few people from around the league who have worked with him, etc. I mean, the good thing is he, he has a strong track record of growth from his players who he's worked with. Um, that's kind of the biggest talking point that you hear over and over and over again. The, the negative, I think, is obvious. He's never been a head coach. You know, and that, as I was saying in the Packers Daily Chat earlier this afternoon, that is a monster jump. It is a huge change in responsibility to go from, even as a coordinator, calling the plays, etc. He's been an OC in LA under McVay where he didn't call the plays. He's now been an OC where he has had play calling responsibility. Now he's the head man in charge of everything, including the program, including rest and recovery, including strength and conditioning, including everything. He has to, including travel and how they, when they want to leave and when they want to practice and what is the schedule going to be. And uh, there are so many administrative duties that he now has to take on board. He's never done any of it. Um, obviously, he'll have people in the room, people in the building who, who can help him in certain areas. But that is a monster change. And you never know how a guy is going to respond, how he's going to take to it, how players are going to take to him how the coaching staff is going to take to him, people in the building, etc. I mean, it is a huge shift. It's a huge paradigm shift for a coach who, let's face it, is still very young. He's still five years younger than me, for God's sakes. First time in my life 
head coach of the Green Bay Packers, younger than me. Good Lord. You know what that calls for? Hold on a second. Hold on. Just realize what's missing here. Hold on. Let's uh, let's get a drink on it, shall we? Let's, let's pour one out. Not pour one out, pour one in. Green Bay Packers head coach. Younger than Aaron Eggler. It's 2019, yo. Whew, I, I hit spot. Khan is going to be keeping Zook. Lloyd, I'm telling you. If he keeps Ron Zook, all bets are off. Let's see. <laughs> Thoughts on the head coach hired? Where have you been? No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm excited. Offensive guy. Get Rodgers going again. But ultimately, nobody really knows. <laughs> if he retains Zook, it'll be Parky level anger. I like it. Doink, double doink. Uh, here I thought it was you grabbing the lamp and the lampshade. I have a lamp over here, but it's a different lamp. You're old, Aaron. Yeah, no doubt. That looks smooth. It felt smooth. <laughs> Nagler's taking celebratory shots. Let's go! Mm. Keep Joe Witt. Please. Um, sounds like they will. If Patton's kept around, you have to think uh, Witt will stick around with him. Mm. I'm glad it's done and we can focus on the draft. I agree, Samuel, but don't forget, free agency comes first. That is uh, very much in play now with Gutekunst and a boatload of cap room. Cap room. <laughs> Uh, that means Jeff Janis won't get an interview. Correct. I was a bit surprised they didn't look at Vic Fangio. I was as well. I have to admit, uh, it's been a long time thorn in the side of the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, uh, that offense, etc. But obviously, like I said, they've got a type and they're sticking with it. Is that a Star Wars cup? It is. It is a Darth Vader cup. Cheers. Kind of... Curious if McDaniels turned the Packers off or Lafleur turned uh, got them excited. I have to imagine. This is pure guesswork on my part. Um, I've got some feelers out, haven't heard back yet, but I have to imagine that he absolutely crushed his interview. That's what, I mean, I would tend to think that's what happened, especially since they've been the first team to jump on the train as far as uh, making the hire. I got to think that they wanted to get on board and get him before he ultimately ended up maybe talking to anybody else. Although I know he wasn't interviewing in a lot of places. Um, I, I got to think that they wanted to get him before uh, somebody else did. Got to keep Cobb. Woo, that's a new one. Different take. Um, I think they'll let him hit free agency, but there's always a possibility that, you know, they say, you go out, you don't like what you see, come on back on a team-friendly deal. All of that said, I would be very surprised if he doesn't end up wherever McCarthy ends up coaching. McDaniel skipping out on Indy had to hurt his chances. I agree. I mean, I can't think it helped, you know. Um, but I also think, you know, if it had hurt them significantly, the Packers wouldn't have even interviewed the guy. So you have to think he was at least seriously in consideration. Okay, but in all seriousness, will he bring back Raji? God, I hope so. What's the interview like? I really want to know what the process is like. I, I could tell you, but I'd be totally guessing. Um, there are uh, a few people who've written about it in the past. Um, I'll try and find some links and throw them up in a chat next time. What are your thoughts on strength and conditioning? I think uh, Tom Levat is one of the better ones in the league. Packer fans don't know what they're talking about when it comes to uh, injuries and the Packers. There's a possibility he keeps him on as the strength and conditioning coach. It's a possibility they'll let him go. When we talked to Brian Gutekunst last spring in Indianapolis, uh, he sure sounded like a guy who would want to keep Levon around. Um, you know, there are so many factors. And don't forget my interview with Brady Papinga on my podcast last summer. Uh, Brady uh, strongly came out in favor of Levon, saying he's one of the best in the business. Um, 
you know, there a lot of factors go into guys being injured and runs of injuries, etc. A lot, uh, you know, the large part of it that no one talks about is what they do away from the facility on their own, um, especially when it comes to the soft tissue stuff. So, I know that this is a convenient scapegoat, but I would tend to think they keep him around. But that's not a sure thing. It is a new head coach, and strength and conditioning, uh, as it has been under the Packers for quite some time, falls under the purview of the head coach. So if he wants to make a move, he most certainly can. Who's going to be the backup next QB in line? Well, for right now, it'll be Deshaun Kaiser, who interest, interestingly enough, has a history with Matt LaFleur. LaFleur was his coach, one of his position coaches at Notre Dame back in the day. Uh, I heard Mike Pettin was mentioned in the interview about staying in Green Bay. Yeah, we've been talking about that. Uh, it sure sounds like he would like to keep him around. Uh, and that would be welcome news, obviously. Please tell me Zook is gone. Chad, I, I mentioned earlier, if Ron Zook is still employed by this time next week, then you know it was a bad hire. Hopefully he gets Aaron Jones going. Yeah, Mike, I will be interested to see not only Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, etc. in the running game, but I'm very, very excited to see what Lafleur does with the running backs in the passing game. Um, obviously that has been uh, lacking for lack of a better word, in Green Bay for quite some time under Mike McCarthy. It's one aspect of the game that Mike McCarthy never really took to, uh, and I think to his detriment. Um, I am very, very excited to see how LeFleur can employ the talent they have on hand and maybe new drafted talent, who knows, uh, in the passing game. That's where I think he can do his best work. Uh, in your opinion, is Matt LeFleur a good hire for the Packers? Wait and see. Anyone who tells you that they know if it, that it's a good hire or a bad hire is either getting paid to do it or they don't know what they're talking about. Time will tell. And I know in this day and age of the internet and the news cycle being 26 seconds, um, nobody wants to hear that. Everybody wants an interesting, informed, immediate opinion. Unfortunately, when it comes to hiring a new head coach in the NFL, those do not exist. Like I said, you will hear lots of stuff, good and bad, about this new coach. None of it means anything including this broadcast. So cheers. Good point. Kickoff is coming for the national championship in college football, so I'm going to log off. Thank you, everyone, for coming in and chatting with me. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to your question. They do fly by rather fast. Uh, but make sure you check Cheesehead TV for all the latest. Uh, Packers Daily went up a little bit, bit ago. We've got a post up on LeFleur. Uh, obviously, you've heard my chat here, but you can play it back if you'd like. And then uh, make sure you check out the Pack-A-Day podcast where uh, Andy and Michelle did a deep dive into LeFleur uh, when he was a candidate. Now he is obviously the coach, but uh, good overview there, good background. Probably answer all your questions there. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great night.